Hi, I'm Jay Blevins. And I'm Jasmine St. John. And we are systems therapists in Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, we have just decided we want to do a series of videos where we kind of talk about various topics. We do a lot of work with um, kind of the classical things, anxiety, depression, uh, relationship issues. We also do a lot of work with uh, around alternative sexuality, relationships, desire. Um, and so over the, you know, kind of weekly basis or so, we'll probably be putting out some videos uh, talking about some different topics and so absolutely um, I think today what we're gonna do is talk about desire and we have a lot of people that come in that feel like they don't know how to exactly express being present and desire within a relationship and so we thought that we'd give you a little um, example of that and talk further about it and you know I think it's not even most of them don't even know that it's about being present they just say we don't have intimacy or uh, one of them will say, I don't feel, in, and I'm going to be uh, gender stereotypical here, it's typically women saying about men that they don't feel uh, that level of intimacy and connection. Right. You'll often hear that uh, people will come in and they'll say, well, in the beginning he paid so much attention to me or she paid so much attention to me, and now it feels like you know they're not even listening to me, that they're not even there. Right. And then the feedback I get when I talk, to males about it, and again, I'm just going to talk about this in the gender stereotype way because that's kind of the way I would say presents itself 90% of the time, is they say, well, I'm not good with words, I don't know how to do that, I don't, and I think that's the interesting part, is it's really not about the words. I'd say it's only 10% about the words and 90% about other things. And All right, so let's give them an example. Okay. Let's do a little role play and see what it looks like. All right. I. Th you mentioned this about pre before I do that. You mentioned about being present, and Correct. so first, I think we are not very good about being present in our society. And what that means about being present is that we're not multitasking. We're not. Our heads aren't somewhere else. We aren't um, worrying about what the football score is, or what we have to get ready for work tomorrow, or uh, what dinner we're going to make for dinner while we're trying to do something right here. Right. And so conversations are more kind of like this. They come in and say, "Yeah, you know, hi, how you doing?" good to see you, you know, yeah, you, you look good today. Do you take um, care of the kids? Yeah. Put them in bed? So, yeah, they're, they're in bed and we'll get that and I have to have that thing ready for tomorrow. Okay, good. And it's very much that just, yes, we're saying the words and we think it's about the words, but we're our head's connecting. somewhere else and there's no connection. Correct. And I love demonstrating this in therapy sessions because the way I do it is I talk to people and I say, you know, energy is not, and connection is not about the words. And I do it just like this where I'm looking away from the person I'm going to talk to. It's really about being present in the moment and making that person feel like you, they are the only thing in your mind. And so when I do that, I can turn to them and I look at them and I start talking to them about this and you can see the smile creeping on her face. But as we talk, we kind of get closer and if it's appropriate, if you touch, if you Move, you know, do things like that, um, you feel that energy and pretty soon you're kind of the only two in the room. Absolutely. And so there's a difference between when somebody is talking at you or they're talking with you and that feeling of that you're being paid attention to. And I think every single one of us wants to feel that. And so when you're looking to connect, when you're looking to express desire, a big part of that is actually paying attention to the other person, looking them in the eye and sharing that moment and being present with yeah, them. Letting them know that they are the only thing in your world at that moment. And as you saw, I did that entirely while talking about talking. You know, if you think, if you layer on that, if I actually said some nice words, talked about her brown eyes or how pretty her smile was in that, sure, that's gonna enhance it, but I didn't even need that. I right. got th that feel by talk, even just talking the same way I'm talking to you right now, I created that, so. Um, yeah, I think that part of what you want to bring back to have that spark again is looking into each other's eyes, paying attention, and really being present and feeling those feelings that you have for that person and directly looking at them and taking the time to really let them know that you're focusing on them. And you know, it works in a lot of ways. It works if you're not in a relationship and you're wanting to meet people. There's a difference if you want to go up and you see somebody in a coffee shop or whatever, or at the bar or wherever you are and you want to talk to them, you're going to have a different reaction if you come up and you're, oh look, there's also somebody pretty over there and whatever, and as opposed to you come over and suddenly they just filled your world up and they sense that, there's going to be a different response. You know, it's not going to work every time, but it's sure going to increase your uh, chances of success of connecting with someone. So you can apply it whether you're in a relationship, but I think it's really important in relationships because I think we forget that. I think some people are good at doing it at when they're establishing a relationship, but doing it ongoing. 
Right. I think that if you want to continue to increase and enhance your relationship, then really paying attention to your partner is one of the key points. And being able to do it in a way where you are fully present and paying attention to them consciously, I think that really makes a difference. And that people can feel that energy. They can feel that desire, that change in the perspective that's happening, that it's no longer just about them. They're actually taking the time to care and focus on you. And I think all of us want that. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that we believe in doing therapy, and I don't think everybody believes, is that desire can last throughout a long-term relationship. A lot of people think, well, that's the beginning part, and that's the way it always is, and then it settles in to the other part, the long-term part. And we don't agree with that. We right. think there are two parts to it. You, you can't have just desire and intensity. You have to build that stability, that friendship, that partnership, but you also can maintain desire, the desire and intensity and passion uh, long term, but it takes work. You have to actually focus on doing the things that it takes to do it because they're actually the things most people do in the beginning. They just stop doing them and there's no reason those have to stop. Absolutely, and I think the main thing is is that people get so afraid about the words that they're gonna use and it really is so much less about the words and more about the direct paying attention to your partner and sharing the feelings of what's happening. You, you are going to stumble over your words, but if your intention is to connect and say something kind and loving, your partner's gonna know it even if you don't exactly have all the exact words that you want that are perfect. And you know, I mean, one of the classic examples, right, is when people are dating and you hang on every word of the other person. Right. But then once you're married, you spend hours and hours sitting on the couch watching TV together and the feeling is, well, we spend all this time together, but it's just not the same kind of time right. as that time when there's that connection and that attention and that focus. Um, and a lot of people get frustrated because I can't spend more time with my partner. And it's not about the amount, it's about the quality of the time and, and it really makes a difference. Exactly. So we just want to encourage you to connect with your partner, your friends, somebody new, and really pay attention to them and look at them and let them know that they're the person that you want to be focusing on right now. So hope that was helpful. Uh, again, I'm Jay Blevins. And I'm Jasmine St. John. And we are systems therapists in Madison. We do therapy with individuals, couples, groups, families, and also we're available, we do education events uh, uh, and workshops, and so we're available if anybody's interested in having uh, someone come and speak about relationships or desire or any therapy topic, but those are really our specialties. Even uh, private parties, people that want to have a discussion and ask questions about uh, stuff that they normally don't get to answer about, ask about, we are available to do that. So uh, if we can be any help, or if you have questions you'd like to have us talk about, um, we will get an email on the slide, and you can you can uh, email either one of us and um, ask questions. We'll be happy to address them in a future uh, webcast. All right. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye.